Hello, I'm Regina. So today I'm going to show you how to create an eight and a half by five and a half planner. So this was a requested video where someone asked if I can show them how I make the smaller version. Um, so as you've seen on my uh, last video, I've showed how to do a regular size, which is eight and a half by 11 inch planner, um, something similar to this, right? So you will need to have your laminating machine, a piece of laminated uh, sleeve so that you can put your cardstock into, your image printed, um, your wires, right? Your um, cinch wires, a cinch machine or something that can actually cut holes into your paper as well as um, bind everything together once we get everything printed and the holes punched. So a different thing that we're going to try in this video is to, um, instead of printing your image out on cardstock, you're just going to take a plain piece of cardstock paper. We're going to laminate that first without the image. And then we're going to sublimate your printed image onto the top of the laminated cardstock. So that's something different that we will do tonight. Um, so what we're trying to achieve is this planner. So I've gone ahead and made a small version. This is a eight and a half by five and a half planner. Um, this one I've laminated, or excuse me, I've sublimated directly on top of this laminated cardstock. So that's what I will be walking you through this evening. And I will tell you, I think I kind of prefer to laminate directly onto the, um, or excuse me, to sublimate directly onto the laminated cardstock versus printing. And so you can kind of see the difference here <clears throat> with the coloring, right? So this one, it still came out really nice with, you know, printing my uh, print directly onto the cardstock paper. But it seems like the colors are a little bit more vibrant on the ones that I sublimated directly onto uh, a laminated cardstock piece of paper. So these two images <clears throat> I've done um, by sublimating directly onto the cardstock after it has been laminated versus printing the images. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have my, this is just plain cardboard paper. Um, I'm going to use the cream color because I want her to kind of stand out versus just using, you know, plain white, right? Want to give it a little bit of color to it. Um, decided not to use pink because the image is um, already in pink, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually laminate this cardboard piece first. So I have my lamination sleeve here. And so I'm just going to insert the um, cardboard directly in here. My machine has been heating up and it's actually ready to go. <clears throat> so just find out which end. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna slide this in, make sure it's kind of even. In here. <clears throat> the only thing about these sheets, they pick up everything. All right, so I just want to make sure that I don't have, you know, fibers um, all in here because I did have this piece open. <clears throat> okay. All right. So, all I'm going to do now at this point is I'm just going to run this um through my laminating machine. Um again, I got this machine from Amazon for about 20 bucks. So you can also get them at uh, Walmart, I think Target sells them. You know, you don't want to pay more than $20 for a laminating machine. Mm -hmm. So we'll let this go ahead and laminate. 
And while we're doing that, we will um, <clears throat> get ready to cut our image because what I'm going to end up doing is cutting down this laminated piece, right? So that it is five and a half, um, the size also of what the image is that I'm going to laminate onto uh, the top portion of here. And then I'm going to also cut my image because remember I printed it where I have two images on there. So I'm also going to cut that down by just cutting it in half at five and a half across the top also just to um, size it, right? So that way it's easier when laminate, or excuse me, when sublimating this on the actual machine because then we don't have to work with the full piece. I'm just gonna cut this down. And as you can see, I had so much lint and everything um, under this packet, but it's okay because it's just for me. So um, <clears throat> we'll get started with cutting down, like sizing and cutting down the actual image okay so this is my paper cutter and y'all remember this from when we were in <laughs> what elementary middle school right we used to have these um to use and i picked this up at walmart i think i paid 23 dollars for it so but it comes in handy i do have a smaller um cutter but the sizing is not going across the top it's going across the side so it doesn't really um help me for what i need so what i like to do too with all my binders that i make you see how the edge here has uh the piece that's not laminated all around i like to go and cut that <clears throat> off just to get everything nice and even so i'm going to go through um cut that all across four sides all the four sides right and so i line it up to where my edge of the paper is on the edge of the actual uh, machine here to cut. <clears throat> and so all I'm doing is cutting the excess off because then it helps to one, make it a more cleaner look as well as um, help when I'm measuring out, you know, of how I want to cut this. So again, remember, I just want to cut it at five and a half going across. So when I put this onto the board here, it measures right at 11 inches. So I know my five and a half is over here. So I'm just gonna move my paper over to where it's at the five and a half mark and all the other excess is hanging off of the board here. So hopefully you can see how this looks, right? So my paper, the end of it here is at five and a half inches. I'm just gonna put it down. So now I have my two pieces. I have my front and my back for the binder, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing with the image <clears throat> for sublimating it. So here is the image, okay, that we printed. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this also at um, five and a half. And of course it measures at 11 across. So I'm just gonna move it on over here <clears throat> to my five and a half mark, just so that I keep it consistent with the size of the binder, because if you, and I don't really have to cut it at five and a half. I can cut it a little shorter because I don't have words all around it. But if you want to stay consistent with making sure, you know, try and program your mind for the future, if you're going to do a full color or, you know, having words all around it or what have you, you want to make sure that the size is right. So I'm just going to cut this at five and a half also. <clears throat> so again, I have one piece and here's the second. So I really could actually sublimate it on both sides, right? The back and the front. <clears throat> but again, I'm going to save this piece and I'll just, you know, make a smaller one for someone else. Probably my daughter or something. So just waiting now for my um, heat press here to heat up. And then I'll show you how I sublimate and then put everything together. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and um, sublimate the image on top of the laminated cardstock just to show you a var variation right because my last video I actually printed the sublimated or not sublimated I just printed an image out on cardstock then I laminated that um, but we're just doing the reverse so I've gone ahead and taken some clear or not clear <laughs> plain paper um, just regular coffee paper 
and I've cut that in half so that it's five and a half inches also. I've used my cinch machine and you will see that in my prior video of making a full planner, a full size planner. I've also have um, cut the holes into them as well. So I use 50 sheets of paper, cut them in half so it is for a hundred sheet um, binder. All right, so I have my heat press here. I have heated it up to 320. I'm gonna put it on for 60 seconds. This is a Heat, Nash, heat Nation uh, heat press. It gets extremely hot. So <clears throat> when I'm sublimating items for a regular t-shirt, I go up to 375 because it gets so hot that it was burning some of my other images and shirts, right? So for this temperature, I've put it around 320. I know that that works for me. Um, so I'm just gonna lay my image down. I put a piece of butcher paper underneath because I do have this on my mat still, even though the image is not gonna go through the cardboard onto the back of the laminated sheet. Just for my sanity, <laughs> I'm putting butcher paper down underneath and I'm putting a piece of butcher paper on top so that the top image will not bleed through onto my uh, heat press. Um, so again, I have this on for 320. We're gonna um, press it for 60 seconds and um, let's see how this comes out. So after we press this, then we will punch holes into the top and the back portion of the binder. Then we'll also use our binding wire to put it together. And then there you have it. You will have your planner. <clears throat> so we'll just wait a couple more seconds. We're already halfway through. Again, this was purchased off of Heat Press Nation. Now mine is a 13 by nine and a half, I want to say, the metal plate. So I did have a larger one, um, not a Heat Press Nation brand, but I did purchase an off-brand one that was a little bit larger and I'm finding that I should have probably kept that <laughs> so I will end up buying another one with a larger plate probably a 15 by 15 or 16 by something just to be able to do larger size jobs too okay so let's just see how this came out all right so this was um put down on 324 60 seconds and as you can see it did go through didn't go through the back but you can see the image did go through and applied itself to the laminate um so it's hot but it's not as hot as a regular um piece of item would be that you were laminating and you can see before we did have a darker image and now this one is lighter because it did transfer um, over. Mm -hmm. So this just gives you another way to put your images onto your binders, right? Um, so again, you can do the other way in my other video that shows printing an image, just regular ink onto cardstock paper, then laminating that sheet, cutting it, right, to get the excess off and then binding. Or you can also try this way. So this way, of course, is just laminating a blank piece of cardboard paper, printing out your sublimated item or your image, and then sublimating that on top of your laminate. So I also wanted to show you this way because for those of you who have not tried it yet, you can um, sublimate images onto canvas. And the way that you would do it is the same method. So you'd laminate your, um, your piece of laminating paper onto the canvas by way of your heat press machine. Then you take your image, lay it onto the top portion of the canvas that has been laminated. And then there you have it, you'll have your portrait. So you can offer that as well. So now we're gonna go ahead and cut the images or excuse me, cut the holes of these images into the binder format. So I'm going to use my cinch machine. And again, I've already done the pages, right? 
So I'm gonna use my cinch machine because I need my top, my front and back portion of my binder to cut my holes into. And when I cut this, I did not um, measure properly, so it's off a little bit. So just be careful when you are cutting your um, your papers in half that you really measure it the right way. I think when I started to um, go down on the paper cutter, I shifted a little bit and one side is a little longer than the other. But again, this is mine for personal use, so it's okay. <clears throat> All right, so on the cinch machine, again, you have on the bottom portion, it tells you this page size or height that you want to pull out a peg so that you don't go over the top with cutting a hole in. So I'm gonna leave it flush first. Um, all my peg holes are pushed in. I'm going to put these two up against it and I'm going to cut holes or punch holes into my top and back portion of the binder. All right, so for the first part, you'll see here are the holes, right? So this is eight and a half inches in height. The bottom piece tells me for eight and a half inches in height, I need to um, pull out peg number five so I can finish cutting. And the reason that I'm pulling out peg number five is so that I don't go to the very top of the page and cut a hole in it and the hole will be a partial. So I'm just pulling this peg out <clears throat> to where it stands out some. So that will prevent number five from cutting or anything um, ahead of it, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and press down again. I push the peg five back in, unlock it, and here. So now I have the rest of my holes cut along the line of the paper. Had I not pulled out number five, it would have went to the very top and there would have been a slit at the top, right? So it would have been off. So now what we wanna do we just want to use, and I'll just put this aside for a second. <clears throat> we want to use our um, binding wire to go ahead and start putting our planner together. So let me just bring this down a little bit, sure, so you can see everything here. Okay, so. I'm gonna go ahead, and again, I didn't print anything on the back. It's just gonna be a plain back. I'm gonna go ahead and line this up into uh, the wire ring. As you can see, there is an excess right at the top. So I'm going to take my jewelry wire cutter. I'm just gonna snip there. <clears throat> And I'm actually going to save this because this will make for a cute little flip binder. So I'll try that next time. All right, so I'm just putting this in. So now I have my back into the ring binder. And then I'm just going to start putting my pages in. All right, my blank papers are going to start going in. Just lining them up, putting them in. And let's just see if I can probably try and get all of these in at the same time to save some time. Okay, so I have my back and my pages in here. So now I just want to put my front portion of the binder on. Okay, so I have my front and back on, all the pages in. We'll bring the cinch machine back over because we need to use the back of it. So on the back of the cinch machine is your portion that will bind your rings here. So what I'm going to do is put my binder in the back of here. <clears throat> there is a black strip that shows you and I'm just gonna push down. That will close my rings and I move it up and push down. So now I have my binder put together and what i always do is the piece that i cut at the top i push that in so it goes into that first ring i kind of go through making sure everything is down you know um the binds look pretty good and then you'll see at the very end of the ring there is a piece that is uh hanging out and you'll notice that when you purchase your 
your wires, there is a little piece at the bottom here. So I'm going to just cut that little tail off <clears throat> so it's flush and it doesn't cut anyone. And then I just tuck that into the last uh, bind as well. And there you have it. Now we have our eight and a half by five and a half uh, planner. So I can use this. And for me, I like to freeform a lot of notes. And so for me, I'll probably use this one for any of the uh, notes that I'm taking, either during my day job or for when I'm taking notes when someone calls in an order versus placing it on my website. So if you find this video helpful to you, if you like it, please um, subscribe to my channel. Make sure you push for the bell so you'll know every time that I'm uploading a new um, item out here, as well as share with your friends. I do have a website. It is www.agdesigns-online.com. I will also have that put down in the notes too. So again, thank you for watching. And as always, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.